Hi, everyone. My name is Anthony Ruggiano, and in 1988, I was struggling with addiction, and I went into a treatment center. I set up a helpline number, which is 855-963-2113. That's 855-963-2113. That number, phones will be manned 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if you're struggling with addiction, or you know someone that is struggling with addiction, please call that number and let me help. I will be hands-on. I will be personally involved in the person's recovery. They will meet me. They will spend time with me. And I will help them live a life beyond their wildest dreams. So please, if you know anybody that has a problem with addiction or you yourself have a problem with addiction, please call that number and let me help. And also help their family members or friends. Please call that number, 855-963-2113. That's 855-963. 9632113 Hello everybody, my name is Anthony Ruggiano and I want to welcome everybody to the Reform Gangsters podcast. Um, and if you enjoy this content, please click the like button and hit subscribe and ring that bell. And if you support what I'm doing, become a member of reformgangsters.com, you know, get early access to my content, contact me, ask me questions, and we could talk about pretty much anything you need to talk about. Um, so just uh, reach out. So I just want to talk a minute about what's going on in, in my life it, with, my, uh, with my podcast, Reform Gangsters, which I, I, I believe in, you know, and, and I try to do it to the best of my ability. So uh, we were doing really well with YouTube. Um, everything was moving forward. And then all of a sudden I started talking about um, drug treatment and um, explaining to people out there what goes on in drug treatment centers. And, uh, and I started promoting a helpline where I could help people um, with drug addiction and alcohol addiction. All of a sudden now I'm being flagged. I'm being demonetized. Uh, demonetized uh, cutting my, my fees, um, they're saying my content has too much violence in it. And um, I mean, you know, they sent us some guidelines and I do, I'm like sort of in a gray area with some stuff, I'll give them that, but um, you know, but, it, but I haven't, I've been talking about this for months now and all of a sudden now, since I started talking about some drug reform and, and drug treatment and a helpline, all of a sudden I'm being flagged now. So, um, to prevent any further aggravation on my part or anything, if you're interested in my videos moving forward, um, you could go on Patreon and uh, you get to that through Reform Gangsters and just uh, you know, just it's a it's just a five dollar fee. So if anybody's interested, please uh, go to Reform Gangsters and and go to Patreon and 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 uh, register. And you know, we're we're speaking to YouTube to try to get this all straightened out. Um, because you know, I want to put out some good content. I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to disrespect YouTube either. You know, so I'll, I'll work within the guidelines. But I would like to know a reason why all of a sudden nothing was said, and now I'm talking about uh, drug treatment and and drug prevention and my own history. You know, on that road to addiction and and then getting clean and sober. Why all of a sudden I'm having issues? So. Um, We'll find out what happens, more will be revealed, and, and I'll let you know as soon as I know what's going on. But in the meantime, like I said, go to Reform Gangsters, go to Patreon, and 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 um, register and listen to all my content. Um, I want to give a big uh, congratulations to uh, my good friend, Michael Francis, who uh, went over a million subscribers, um, which is amazing. You know, he's got great content. Um, you know, he's the, he's the best out there right now, as far as this Chandra go, is concerned. Um, and I just want to congratulate him. Um, I know he puts in a lot of hard work and, uh, you know, he, he, he believes in what he does and he made some major changes in his life. And, and, and I give him much respect. It was a picture that I took in, um, 1979. I was 25 years old. It took place at 
Arthur Kill Correctional Facility in uh, Staten Island. Back then in the 70s, it was a state prison. Um, today, it's still there. It's abandoned. I think they might make it a, a they're talking about making it a movie studio. Um, the other fellow in it, Freddie Pierno, the, the, the second person from the right, he was another inmate. He was my co-defendant. He was there. Um, and uh, another person in the picture was Sally Pecchio, whose nickname was Sally Botts. He's my child, was my childhood friend. And the other one was uh, Carl Amato. He was another friend of ours that he came up to visit me with Sal, Sally Botts. Um, later on, Carl Amato became a made member of the Gambino family. Unfortunately, him and Freddie have passed away. Um, you know, I, I, I try to answer as many questions as I can. Um, a lot of questions, a lot of people ask me if I knew certain people basically really all over the country in Chicago and LA and Florida and Jersey and Cleveland. And, you know, and, and I did know a lot of people. I mean, my father knew a lot of people. Um, you know, we had personal relationships with some of them, some of them we didn't, but we knew of them. But uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about a fellow named Tommy Agro. And uh, Tommy was my father's co-defendant on my father's case in Florida. Um, he was a made member of the Gambino family. He was in um, a famous, um, a very powerful captain's name, uh, crew named Joe Piney, who was a major heroin trafficker back in the day, who did a lot of time for heroin trafficking. Um, he was a captain in the Gambino family. He actually was a, a major player in, 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 in uh, the assassination of, uh, of, of uh, Paul Castellano. Um, so uh, he straightened Tommy out. I personally met Tommy in the 70s, in the early 70s, um, at an after-hour club in Manhattan. It was a penthouse in Manhattan that three people owned it. Eddie Lino, who I'm sure everybody out there knows who Eddie was, he was a captain in the Gambino family that was assassinated on the Bell Parkway by the mob cops. Uh, but back then in the 70s, he was just, uh, uh, you know, he was hanging out at the Ravenite. He was partners with another guy named Charlie Wingy, who was a drug dealer, and this other guy, Jimmy Bowles. The three of them were partners. I actually worked for them for a while in their number business. But anyway, they had this after hour club in Manhattan in a penthouse up on the top of this building, a beautiful after hours with a dice. I mean, it was gorgeous. And that's the first time I personally met Tommy A. They used to call him Tommy A. He came up there. He was a rah-rah guy. He, had, he was a short guy with a with a deep voice, very loud, very boisterous. You know, um, he came up there. He knew who I was, that I was Andy's son, that he was introduced to me. He actually hung out with us, drinking, um, doing some other stuff that I don't want to mention anymore on YouTube. At the end of the night, Sal, my friend Sal and I actually drove him home. He had an apartment down in downtown Manhattan, and he actually got in the car with some young lady that he was taking home with him, and we drove him home. So that was my first meeting with Tommy A., when I was a kid, that was before I went to prison. I must have been about 22 years old at the time. I already knew Joe Piney through my father. We used to go to his restaurant. My father had dealings with Joe Piney. So I already knew who his captain was because he had just got straightened out at that time, Tommy A. And that was that, right? After I got out of prison in 1980, my father um, was uh, bouncing back and forth from Florida to New York. He was going back and forth. Um, he had a business in Florida, so he was traveling back and forth. And his partner, Tony Lee, he stood in New York, basically took care of all their operations in New York. And my father was running a crew down in Miami, in South Miami, in Broward County, and Dade County. And my father didn't know anybody that Tommy was with Tommy down there. He knew Bobby DeSimone. He knew Bobby DeSimone. Tommy DeSimone's brother was with Tommy A., but he didn't know anybody else. While my father was down there, Tommy A. had beat this guy, Joe Dogs, Joe Iannuzzi, beat him half to death over money. I mean, really gave the guy a, a tremendous beating that uh, the only reason why he didn't die was because a woman that was in the back of a pizzeria in Florida and a woman walked in the back of the kitchen and they stopped beating Joey Dogs and they ran out. While Joe Dogs was in the hospital, he made a deal with the FBI to get even and, and because the Mob is a greedy organization. They actually took him back into their crew after beating him half to death. So he was he was actually already cooperating. So what happened was my father was in Florida. He got sent for by um to come to New York. Um, he was sent for by Paul Castellano, O'Neill, and Joe Gallo, who was the uh, counselor at the time. 
and he was sent for them and, and, uh, and he flew up to New York and he met with them and he met with Joe Piney and he met with Tommy A. And Paul asked my father if he knew um, Traficante Jr. in uh, Tampa. And my father did know him. My father was introduced to him. My father knew him. And back then in Miami and Florida, bingo halls were, the, were very big. The mob had control of the bingo halls um, and they were making big money with bingo halls. There was no casinos down there then at the time. So bingo halls, bingo halls were really huge, huge, huge. They asked my father if he could go uh, to see Traficante with Tommy and represent them and take care of this issue because Tommy had a problem with them over a bingo hall with the Traficante crew in Tampa and Tommy had an issue with a bingo hall in Florida and they asked my father to take Tommy there and represent them and sit down with Traficante and Tommy and straighten this thing out. So they flew back to Florida. They went on to sit down with Traficante and a couple of other people and my father straightened it out. And uh, I, I think they wind up going partners with them or, or something and, um, and they went partners with them. And in the interim, Tommy asked my father if he would service Tommy's guys while Tommy was in New York. Cause Tommy was, used to go back and forth. He would come to Florida for two or three weeks then he'd go back to New York. And at the time, my father was living in the Diplomat Hotel. So Tommy used to stay in the Diplomat Hotel, too, at the time. But it's comical, too, because we all used to stay in the Diplomat. And my wife at the time, Alice, she was a good kid, but she was a little dizzy. And she was close. Tommy was married to an Asian girl. I forget the Asian girl's name. He liked Asian girls, Tommy. And this girl was a doll. And she was very friendly with my wife because we, we all used to go out. Cause I was lived down there with my wife at the time. And, you know, so we would all go out for dinner, Tommy and his wife and my father and his girlfriend, Josephine, and we'd all go out for dinner. And we used to sit by the pool in the, at the dip line. And it's like a hundred degrees. We're in Miami, Florida. And my wife used to tell Tommy, Tommy, why don't you ever just jump in the pool? You just like sit there and put your feet in the water, you know? And one day I had to tell her, listen, stop asking him that. He's got a wig on. She went, oh my God, I never knew. Cause he wouldn't go in the water cause his wig might come off. My father said, yes, of course I'd service you guys. So who was one of his guys? Joe Dogs. So my father started servicing his guys, and my father became very, very friendly with Joe Dogs. Joe Dogs, in the meantime, had a wire on because of this beating that Tommy gave him, and Joe Dogs brought an undercover FBI agent to my father, and my father was giving the guy Shylock money. Tommy A was a very abusive person, a loud mouth. Um, it was comical too, because he used to wear a wig. Um, he was a very flashy dresser. He was a short guy, very flashy, but he had a big mouth. I mean, he cursed and threatened, I'll chop you. you know, he was one of them guys, I'll come to your house, I'll kill your wife, I'll kill your kids. Like he had no, he had no filter. Um, whatever popped into his brain came out of his mouth. I mean, it was terrible. He was you know, and he was violent and he was vicious. So my father started working with him. They started doing things together. You know, they were Shylock and customers together, you know, because now there's agents in the picture. He's taking money off my father. My father's cooking dinner for this guy. He's an undercover FBI agent, you know. Then um, um, they opened up uh, and then what happened was they they um, they reached out to the sheriff, Boone Darden in, in, uh, in Riviera Beach, he was the sheriff. They had him on the take. My father and Tommy had him on the take. So they opened up a, a gambling club in the in the in the in River Riviera Beach. Actually, they opened it up with FBI agents because Joe Dogs brought money guys around that were more agents. So the so the FBI opened up this place and everything was wired. By that time, now my father's house. They they went so far as they knew my father loved to cook. They actually put a bug in my father's kitchen. Of course, my father would be cooking and guys would come in the kitchen and talk to him. So they actually put a bug in my father's kitchen and they have tapes and Joe Dogs wrote a cookbook and in the cookbook, he has Fat Andy's meatball recipe. So needless to say, because of Tommy A's big mouth and because of the beating he gave to Joe Dogs, my father got caught up in an investigation and my father got indicted by with, for a Rico with Tommy with uh, with, uh, with Bobby De Simone, with Sal Real, uh, Junior Abandando, whose father was the Dasher, he was in Murders Incorporated, and a lot of other people. Because you see, Joe Dogs 
he before he winded up with Tommy A, he started out in the Colombo family. He was with Dominic Cataldo, this wise guy named Dominic Cataldo. He was good friends with Ali Boy, the young Ali Boy Persico, Joe Dogs was. He was good friends with Carmine. He was good friends with Dominic Cataldo. So he started out with the Colombos. And then he winded up with the Gambinos. Later on, he winded up with Tommy A. The Columbos released him to Tommy A. And he was good friends with Johnny Irish, who was with Sonny Francis, who was good friends with Michael Francis. Johnny Irish was a good friend of mine. He was a good friend of my father's. He disappeared. Um, he came to New York and he, he disappeared. So we all know what happened to him, unfortunately. Um, so needless to say, they all got indicted. Um, and Joe, Joe, they went to, and the tapes were horrendous. I mean, if you ever hear these tapes with the things that Tommy said on, on, on the phone, the tapes were horrendous. But you know what? The first trial, my father got a hung jury with Tommy, which was amazing. After the first trial, Tommy got diagnosed with lung cancer, terminal. He was a chain smoker and a big drinker and a chain smoker. So Tommy gets, he woke up one day, my father said in the prison and his pillowcase was full of blood from coughing up blood. So needless to say, he got, uh, he got diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. So to, um, to, to not die in prison, he profited. Um, so, so at the end, he became an informant also. He never testified or anything, but he profited. He gave them a lot of, he gave the feds a lot of information about Joe Piney, about my father, about everybody. And um, and they let him out of jail and he died home. He went home and he died. He didn't want to die in prison. He